So if you're a big fan of this feature like I do, you will most definitely love this new VS Code extension that is open source that allows you to run the exact same artifacts feature right into your VS Code alongside your projects. Yes, alongside your projects so you can modify, create projects like big projects starting from the Cloud 3.5 Sonnet using the artifacts feature and literally a lot more. You can actually explore your imagination. You can you can do so many cool stuff with this new extension. So it's called the Cloud Dev VS Code extension in here. And as I said before, the uses the new Cloud 3.5 Sonnet in here and specifically this the awesome new feature that it provides or the Cloud 3.5 Sonnet provides, which is the agent encoding, which basically allows the Cloud 3.5 Sonnet to solve almost like 64% of problems on internal agent encoding evaluation. And the tests that were run, it was actually tested on the model's ability to understand an open source, a real open source code base and implement pull requests, like real pull requests, such as big bug fixes or add a new feature. You just give it a natural language description of the desired improvement and it goes ahead, reads the whole open source project and it puts PRs or pull requests for you for like bug fixes or even improvements. And yes, it was absolutely amazing using this new agent encoding feature. I like for us, we can test this new feature using this new VS Code extension in here. It's called the Cloud Dev, which if you scroll down a little bit in here, you can go actually head to the marketplace, the VS Code marketplace in here. So it's still brand new. You might find a couple of bugs going on or stuff like weird stuff, but I really love the idea in here. And with a little bit of improvements, it's going to be absolutely amazing. So this is basically what the extension looks like. And once you go ahead and open it up, you're going to find something like this. So I've already did create a task, but for you, you're just going to have, you know, where you type the message and you're going to find like everything empty. I'm going to show you that in a second, but I want to actually show you what it looks like when you create a task. For example, this was a little bit complicated task where I instructed it to go ahead and create a landing page for an AI SaaS startup using React, Tailwind CSS and ChatCN. And the startup will help creators generate fun and cool looking images, starting base images with text prompts. Make sure the hero section has a cool SVG with the main theme of the startup. The rest of the landing page should include feature section, user reviews from Twitter section, and how we work section and a footer. So that's as simple as it is. It's a little bit more, but this is basically the gist of it. Now here, it gives you like a breakdown of how many tokens that were used throughout this prompt. As you can see, there is 153,000 tokens uh, downloaded for the whole project, which is huge because this created a whole project, created multiple files, and the prompt in here has almost 18,000 tokens as, as far as I can tell and the API cost which I absolutely love so the API cost in here took 100.0.7 dollars seven ish dollars and by the way of course you're going to need an API key from Claude for this to work otherwise you won't be able to do anything and you can claim five dollars free credit on Claude.com once, once you register for a new account so you can actually go ahead and register for a new account and start testing with this one so the agentic loop in here is quite fascinating. So what it does, it tries to make a first API request and it tells you exactly the prompt, to, like the first prompt is gonna make in here. For first, and it's gonna do, oh, certainly, I will create a model landing page for a startup. It starts thinking like out loud and it starts laying down the different instructions or different steps that's gonna actually gonna take to fulfill your prompt or to create the projects in our case in here to create this model landing page for AI SaaS startup. So first you're gonna do, oh, set up a new project with React and with Chassian, create a main app component component, create components for each section of landing page, stand the component using Tailwind CSS, implement a cool SVG for the hero section, and ensure the design is modern and responsive. And I absolutely love this section where it breaks down because it can tell you exactly what it's going to do. And before it continues, you can go ahead and instruct it like, oh, don't do this, do this. You can, you know, adjust before it goes then you can actually ask you to you know continue if you approve you're going to continue and it's going to start putting together different files for example the first file in here is going to create it's going to give you the full path for example i have this cloud dev experiment and this it created this folder for me it's ai image startup and it's going to first put the package.json then the tailwind config and you can see the full contents of this like tailwind config in here got the index.css index.javascript up.javascript in here like you know the whole job 
JavaScript file. And if you notice in here, it already has plans for putting different sections from like the hero section, the feature section, how it works, reviews, and last but not least, the footer. And as you can notice in here, of course, it uses Tailwind CSS for pretty much everything. So for every single step, it tries to create a new file or alter content or update content in a specific file. It's going to ask you whether you want to approve or deny this specific thing so it doesn't do stuff without your permission which is from a security perspective, it's pretty good. So you got the hero uh, in here and if sometimes it gets stuff wrong, it tries or retries because that's why it's called the agentic loop. So it always tries to loop and get feedback from the results he has and it tries to improve. So here, when he finds that this hero file is completely empty, maybe for because of like API rate limit or something. So he tries to go ahead and, you know, fix that one and he gets you the contents of the hero. So he's in here like hero.javascript and he got me the content. This is the content and he continues for creating the whole file. So he's in here, it was a huge conversation. Then he asked it to fix some stuff like I don't want a React script, I want Vite. Uh, so he tried to do that again. Then, um, you know, like it tells you the task complete in here at the end of every single prompt and it gives you all the instructions that you need to do from npm install and stuff um, now it's telling it here for example oh tailwind says it's not working properly can you check why it so it goes ahead and checks why try to fix it by installing post css plenty of stuff so it's really good you can actually keep going through the same conversation because it has a huge context so it's very very well made up and i absolutely love this agentic loop with the feedback and the dynamics so it just is super easy and super powerful as well so at the end if we go to the project structure this is the ai image startup that was created or generated using the magic of cloud 3.5 sonnet so we've got package json we've got a bunch of stuff like tailwind css vite the src in here has a lib component for utilities uh, I should probably just make that so you can you guys can go ahead and check it out. Uh, we've got components in here of different sections like features, header, her, uh, but hero, how it works, reviews, and last but not least, the main app.js in here. And if you want to check out the full web page, so this was completely generated with a Cloud 3.5 sonnet from the hero section in here. Of course, this is not the perfect image. It's very hard for, you know, an a text model to generate like good SVGs or images in here, but still pretty good for placeholder. The text is absolutely amazing. I love the buttons. I love the nav bar in here. It's good. Even put a logo, like a small image logo for you. Sign up and log in using Satsian buttons. Uh, and it got like small, teeny, tiny sections in here for oh, features, a better way to get amazing images and how it works. So it just gives you all the steps like upload, uh, describe, generate, and download. And here it gives you like testimonials. And if I really like this because it gives you images for of like different uh, people and it tells you, oh, as a graphic designer, image AI has become an indispensable tool in my workflow. It's like having a creative assistant available 24 seven and go on like so on and so forth. It makes this look really, really realistic that it was created or as if it was created by real human developers. And the footer in here also is pretty straightforward. Of course, you might need some changes from you, but you've got a store point. You've got a place to start. You've got a project to start just by a couple of prompts. I find this really, really good nowadays, especially for us as developers. This can save you hours, like quite literally save you hours, especially if you have like, you know, teeny tiny projects or uh, school assignments or something of that sort. It just is incredible. For example, when you're asking to create a Dino snake game, which is just a snake game with controls, I can control it with a keyboard or specifically the arrow keys. And it did actually a pretty good job. It used the Canvas 2D, like the HTML Canvas 2D in here, and it did everything in here, all the logic, the HTML and CSS for styling. And if you go back in here and try to go ahead and open this up, you're gonna find this is snake game, so I'm dead already. I can go in and like, you know, I'm controlling this using the arrow keys. I can eat, the snake grows. It's a really fun game. Actually, you can you can generate a game in, in what, what is it, like two minutes? Oh my God, I can't get it to. Okay, I, it's very hard to control this snake. I never knew that this snake game is super hard, but you got the point. This was generated. I generated a couple of other projects like uh, the 3D Earth Globe or the pixelated 3D FPS. And this is actually a 3D FPS, but it's very rubbish. It doesn't work as expected. I think maybe if you just, you know, keep looping and provide it with a little more feedback, it will polish it and make it good. But this was just like a one prompt version. Probably the prompt wasn't good. So this was a little rubbish. The 3D Globe though is pretty good. So let me just copy the path of this and actually show you guys what I mean. So if I go in and click, this is the 3D Globe. It's amazing. So you can get 3D Globe. It turns all by itself. It, it puts it in like an outer space sort of 
theme or atmosphere. Uh, you've got the globe in here in 3D. This actually uses 3JS to build this one, which I find pretty good. It puts the texture on the globe itself because it's 3D, it makes it turn. And the mouse in here actually allows the globe to turn, which is good and bad, but you can, you know, you can switch and make that happen or you can change it however you like. Well, I mean, just grasping through that, this was just generated right into your VS Code with Cloud 3.5 Sonnet with a couple of prompts. I find this super interesting to be honest but keep in mind that it's gonna actually burn through your ape or your tokens or your credits super fast because look for one prompt in here for one project even though it was a little bit bigger project it took almost one almost one dollar which is a lot i think <laughs> So to put this into the real test, let's go and actually give it a try live in here on the video. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to do start new task. This is basically the home page in here. I'm going to put my prompt. So the prompt in here is going to simply be create an enhanced version of the Google Chrome Dino game using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Improve the graphics with more vibrant colors and diverse obstacles. Make the dinosaur green with a unique texture. Include additional visual elements to enrich the game's environment. So. Let's go and give it a try. Hopefully it's gonna create a fun demo game in here. Hopefully it knows what demo is or the you know the dinosaur game of Google Chrome when you don't have an internet connection. So there you go. It tried to figure out the first step in here. Uh, like create a basic HTML structure, style the game with CSS, including vibrant colors right over here. Uh, implement the game with logic and JavaScript. There is op uh, obstacles in here, the unique texture for the dinosaur. And there's like the addition of additional visual elements to enrich the environment. And of course you can read through. So here it tries to ask you like the first file is going to be the HTML page is going to be put inside of enhanced dino game or dino game. I don't know how you guys spell that one, but I'm going to do it uh, dino for now. And I'm going to actually, whether you can go in and like approve or cancel, we don't want to like for AI to take control. So you can go ahead and do approve in here. Then it's going to ask you to create the style CSS, approve. Now the style CSS, sometimes it gets it empty. I don't know why, probably a bug, but the good thing in here, it knows that it got something wrong. So it tries or re it, it tries to go ahead and do the same request again to get the right content for the file in here it missed, which I absolutely love this one. So now it got us the style.css with the actual content, which is good. Um, you can go and do approve and I have got the script in here. I think this is the main game script. So let's get the JavaScript and um, yeah, probably that's it all. So you can go and double check the scripts if anything goes wrong. Uh, there's the green deno.txt. I, I don't know what is this. To be honest, I don't know why is it txt. But um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna approve this anyway. I'm not gonna ask any questions for now. But I'm gonna you know wait till the full game is done, and I can just go and alter and make adjustments however we want. So so there you go. Now it tells you the task was complete. The game has been created. It tells you all the steps, and you can go and open up in Google Chrome in here if you want. So just click the run command in here. But for me, I don't want to run it on Google Chrome. So um, I can do. So it has the demo game in here. I can copy the index. So I just simply copy the path in here, go back. I'm going to put the path and hopefully we're going to find uh, the game in here. So you got, oh, the game is over right before you start, which is interesting. <laughs> so let me just go back in here and try to ask it to fix that one. So I'm going to, you know, write a message in here. The game is broken. It doesn't even start. Can you please fix it and fix the dinosaur character because it looks weird. All right, let's see if it's just gonna reasonably think about this and fix it for us just in a magic way, hopefully. Um, I think it tried to fix the script, which is good. I don't know about the contents, but sometimes reading the content is gonna give you an idea of what's going on. I think this is trying to fix the, uh, you know, the, the, the actual dinosaur kind of like texture or style. Oh, and it's pretty good in here. It's just trying to tell me the main issue is that the game is trying to use a non-existent image for the dinosaur. We will change this to use a color rectangle instead. Okay, that's not really that good, but I'm gonna I'm gonna spare you for now because you at least figure that you're trying to use a non-existent image and you just switch to a rectangle for now, which is not good. We don't want a rectangle, we want something animated, but I think that's a little hard for an LLM to figure out but all by itself without using a different model like Dali or something. Um, trying to introduce another script fixes, I don't know why exactly, but I'm just gonna try it 
approve everything and see if it's just going to fix it for us quickly. And there you go. So that's what we've got in here. If you can check the tokens, it's 62,000 tokens that were received, which is huge to be honest. And the API cost is $0.3, which as I said before, still significant. So I'm going to go back to the game in here, try to refresh. Uh, it starts with an obstacle. Like, how am I supposed to um, figure this out? Like, it doesn't work. And how am I supposed to jump? Oh, okay. So, okay, so that's, that's a little stupid because it just starts from right to left, which makes no sense. It should be from left to right. By now, it's broken. Maybe with a couple more tries, a couple more adjustments, it will fix it with the right prompt, I guess. But for now, it's pretty decent. For this game, it failed miserably, but for the others, it did a pretty good job, especially for this one. Um, I was pretty much amazed. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. And if you guys love this kind of videos where we explore these amazing AI tools and new stuff that are breakthroughs in the AI world and that's going to help us or make us become better developers or maybe steal our job in the near future. Why not? So anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Catch you hopefully in the next ones.